Hi guys, it's Nicole and today I am working on sketch number three for the 6x6 sketch bundle from Scrapbook Generation. This is designed by Allison Davis and she is hosting a Facebook group that goes along with this as long as you had purchased it before a specific deadline. And I had mentioned in previous videos that I am doing my layout before I go look at any inspiration in that group. And I mentioned before, it's just a personal preference. It kind of allows me to stretch myself creatively without seeing how other people have sketched or have stretched themselves until after I've done my layout. And that's just something that I chose to do this round. Um, this specific sketch, I feel like is one is more of like a simple type of layout only because there's so many photos and it kind of comes across more of like a photo collage grid style layout and you've got just kind of one six by six sheet of paper that you're working with. However, saying that it is a simple type of sketch does not mean that I did not manage to sort of mess up or go wrong multiple times during this layout. And I know people say that there's there's no wrong in scrapbooking or there's no, you know, everything everything counts and, and all kinds of creativity is good. I'm not talking on the creativity level. I'm talking on just using your hands and using your tools and somehow those two things not adding up to the right number. That's where I'm talking about going wrong. Um... The sketch depicts, which over on the right, when I'm kind of laying things out, you'll see that I've got an open three by five area. The sketch depicts that that is kind of where she had designed the journaling to go. And when I was planning my layout, that's where I was planning to put my journaling. However, that's not where I put my journaling and I had to kind of figure out what I was going to do because by the time I figured that out, I had already glued my journaling down. So, and that was just kind of like mistake number one. So the whole layout just kind of was just a hot mess. Even, even editing the video so far has been just a nightmare. I think I'm on my third or fourth recording. The last one that was going well, the cat just decided she was going to sit on my phone regardless of the fact that I was using it to record the audio. And when I asked her to move, it didn't go well. So I chose to basically not share that with you guys. Um, okay, now this is a like distress paint dauber thing. And I'm basically going to put white paint on the edges of my photos. One, for kind of a design thing. But two, my picture me... Photo printer is what I use. I have the Picture Mate 400. Ever since I got a new computer, it doesn't matter if I print from the new computer or if I print from my laptop. For whatever reason, I get a thin white like edge just on two, two sides, on one long side and one short side. I have not changed anything on the printer. I have not done anything different. So I have yet to figure out what is going on or how to fix that. So the white paint was my way of covering up some of that. Then I went on a two hour journey trying to find this gold splatter that I knew I had. And it was to the point where I didn't quite know for sure if I had it until I remembered recording a video using this gold splatter, had to go back and watch it to prove that I had it. Finally found it where it actually lived tucked behind a gnome. Um, then realized I threw away my splatter box. So I had just recently bought that cedar mop. And so I used that giant mop box to do my splattering in. So use what you have, basically. So at this point, everything is dry. I'm putting down the paper strips and the photos. And I had mentioned in my six by six prep video where basically I showed how I had matched up paper pads and various supplies to the first five sketches out of the 20. When I got to this one, I was explaining to you guys that the black paper is actually half a sheet of a wedding paper from Simple Stories. So I was able to just basically cut four strips that were one and a half inches wide 
and go ahead and glue them straight onto some white cardstock. And then by the time I put everything else on top of it, it's going to look like it was actually two sheets of this black, like chalkboard looking paper. So that's kind of a cheat for, especially for two page sketches. So if you're a two page girl and you are like it used to be that you would always go to the store and you would buy two sheets of the same pattern paper because you knew that, you know, you might need to make a double page layout and you needed two sheets. Just get creative with your cutting, cut some strips, slap it down onto some cardstock. Good to go. Now these are, I did look up the name of these because I knew I was going to forget and they're from the stamp market and I think of course, it's not going to open. It's the Mini Alpha Cuts Stamp and Dies. And basically, it's going to make your own, like, teeny, teeny little letters. Um, journey number four going through my room. I could swear that I have good gold embossing powder, like Ranger or Simon Says Stamp, some, like a good one. Couldn't find it. Found a bottle of what looked like gold embossing powder and said a little prayer when I put it on there that it was actually going to melt and turn out to be embossing, embossing powder. It was super cheap stuff. <laughs> so they're not like the greatest looking like embossed letters, but that's what I was going with. I knew, I knew right off the bat, I wasn't going to have any any kind of pre-made letters that would have matched the colors that I was going with. I think like black, white, and gold with a little bit of silver is kind of an odd thing unless you're talking like sports or something like that. And then this is the die where you're supposed to match it up, but there's no, there's no guide on the die. So you just kind of have to eyeball it. And I was getting frustrated because I could line up like the top half of the letters, but then as you got progressively lower on the like rows of letters, they got less and less centered, no matter if I went from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. So I'm not sure if that's normal. It just kind of bothered me that you know, spending 25 or $30 on a stamp and die combo to sort of, in theory, make your life easier or be able to make your, your letters yourself. And they didn't line up. I, but again, could be user error. I need to go and see if I can find some videos of other people using them and see if there's any like tips or tricks. And then I used another mistake, should not have used cheap black cardstock. That stuff ended up turning into just a static mess. So like a couple seconds ago, you guys, it, who knows what I was doing over there. I was actually picking letters off of my hand and my arm because they became just giant mess of static clean, basically. And my only guess is between embossing them and or it being just kind of a cheaper black cardstock. Like I, if I had used like maybe heavier weight cardstock, I probably wouldn't have had that problem. But again, first time I've used these, I like the idea of them. Like I love the fact that I was able to make something that was going to match the colors of my layout or the theme of my project. And it's relatively quick process, especially if you weren't embossing, like if you were just doing a colored ink on white cardstock, it would have been super fast. And then I cut um, just a blank one of the the die itself so that I could do the, the layered paper together just to kind of make them a little bit thicker. And then here's like I was talking about. At this point, I've completely forgotten that I meant to type my journaling into a 3 by 5 inch space to put over on that right side. And I'm just happily cutting my journaling strips and going with the flow, not really paying attention, like the sketch is off to the side. I think I know what's going on. And I have moved on to sort of the main part of the like design area is just this kind of six by six area. So I already had this gold paper that it was glued down to some fun foam from a previous project. So I cut my big giant VGK with a big Altenew 
die set, which all this stuff, if it's available, I'll post it down below. I know for sure the stamp market mini alpha thing is. I'm pretty sure the all to new thing is. I caught it during a clearance sale on their site, but I think I saw it on scrapbook.com. And those letters, I think I've used them like nine or ten times in videos just because they're just a good chunky alpha. Um, and any other hockey fans out there, let me know how your patience is on waiting to find out about the hub cities and if the cup is actually going to be played because I need some stress relief and I need to yell at the TV and just watch them do their thing. Um, so this is about the time period where I figured out, oh no, I've glued strips down. I've, I've committed at this point. And I'm kind of just trying to think like, okay, I got a three by five inch hole basically over on the right. What am I going to do? And when I was printing my photos, I already knew I didn't have any other photos that were very good or were any different than the ones that I had already included. So I just kept going, kept trucking along, kept gluing down things that I was for sure on. I added a third word. So instead of it saying sister date, I went with sister date night. Visually, it just filled the space better. So I, so that was kind of just what I went with. And I figured out that basically, and I've done this before. Um, if you saw the video, which I think it was originally a Crafty Maven video, and then I moved it to my channel recently called The Little Mermaid, where I took my daughter to see Little Mermaid Live. I filled in some photos with some Google images of the cast. So I went to Google, and I found myself a wallpaper that I liked, and resized it to 3x5 and printed that sucker out and, and filled that hole. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like for such a simple layout, I either couldn't find something, took a turn in my thought process. I, I'm not real sure. And the only thing I can come up with is for me personally, the first layout back after taking somewhat of a break, which I had taken a break with other stuff going on. And, and apparently my break was noticed because a certain someone who I will not name and she knows who she is kept messaging me telling me that I hadn't posted a video and I needed to get off my butt and go post a video and I told her that she hadn't posted one in four or five days herself and so she couldn't talk and so so here's your video and it's a mess but the first one back for some reason is just I don't know. I feel like if I'm in the groove and I've done a couple layouts that week and I can kind of stay in that groove, I can kind of run with mistakes or run with like change of plans mid layout. If it's been a while, I feel like my brain's just not there. Or if it's not like a layout that I'm like super excited about or something. And like, I don't think out of all 20 sketches, like, this wouldn't be one of my top five favorites. So I think that kind of plays into it, too, where you just kind of have this trifecta of different things going on in your brain. And But to me, it works out to just kind of push through and keep working on it and be okay if it if, if the final result isn't something, like, super wow amazing, I guess. But I like it. Um... Then for everything else, again, I just kind of was using anything and everything, just kind of making little added details to the page. I used some stuff from that Simple Stories wedding snap collection that I had showed in the prep video. I found a pack of fancy pants die cuts up there on the top of my desk that had some gold elements in it, and I ended up using a tab from there. I found these Doodlebug Halloween gems, and I was using some of the black and clear ones. I had already matched up my black and gold sequins to go with this kit, or the sketch. So, I don't know. I just kind of sprinkled stuff here and there. Basically just... And I think I ended up moving... Um... Yeah, I mean, I kind of moved, like, where she had shown the little banner details and stuff, but... Mostly just because where she had shown one of them, it would have covered something up in my photo. And then this one too, 
the sketch showed it like down below on the first photo where like my sister and I are standing. So it would have kind of covered up our faces. So I chose to cover up the people in the background of the photo above and just kind of do that. But yeah, I just mixed a bunch of different stuff. I did some of the wood veneer stars just plain. Some of them I went ahead and like rubbed them into a black soot distress oxide ink, which I had shown that in the video for sketch one where I colored in those stars, but I used bright colors. So yeah, I've noticed I've been repeating things like the stacked cardstock for die cuts, even with the letters and stuff. I'm, I'm finding things that I enjoy the way they look and I enjoy the process of making them. So that's kind of, I don't know, I kind of keep repeating it. But again, do what you like. None of these layouts are going to be back to back in my albums anyways. So I don't really care if I kind of repeat things, but in a different way, going from layout to layout. And it's probably weird. Like I know some friends who their favorite part of putting a layout together is this part is like the decorating and the embellishing. And for me, it's not. And I think it's just because I kind of get like cold feet. Like, look at me, I'm trying to figure out where to put this rhinestone over and over again. And, and it's just one of those things where sometimes it looks good. And sometimes I'm like, Ooh, okay, let's add another one. And then it's like, mm, still, Ooh, let's add another one. And it gets to the point where I'm just like, Oh man. So here we go with the completed layout. And then I've got some detail photos. So you guys can kind of see those stamps that I was talking about. Um, the white paint on the edge of the photos just to kind of fix some of that stuff. I did go ahead and print the scores for the game just as like another fun thing to fill in the photos. I put our tickets on there and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will catch you guys in another video and I'll talk to you later.